Hello friends, hope you are all very well. In this video I thought I would document me making my second ever hand knitted jumper. With everything that's happened in 2020, I had lots of extra time to pick up my knitting needles in earnest and tackle some projects that I had never done before. Even though I've been knitting for 10 years, this was a, kind of a renaissance of knitting for me with all the extra time in the day and the evenings I had to knit. For many years, all I ever knit was scarves and hats and gloves, so the first big project I tackled was a jumper for myself, which took a little bit of time but was a lot easier than I thought. But this video isn't about knitting a jumper for me, it's about knitting a jumper for my boyfriend. So with Christmas 2020 on the way, it was the perfect time to make another simple bottom-up knitted jumper for him. So I hopped on my bike and picked up some lovely grey Quince & Co yarn from my favourite shop in London called Loop. The store was closed for browsing, but you could safely order online and pick up from the store. But before we get into the actual knitting, let's get into the notions and tools that I'll be using. Needles and cables, of course, are the first thing that I'll be using. I was using two different sizes. Stitch markers, a tape measure, embroidery needles, stitch holders for under the arms, a row counter, snips, a crochet hook, and needle stoppers. This tape measure is made by Clover Japan, which a lot of my notions and tools are. It's a nice, small, simple tape measure that snaps closed that's used for measuring as I knit. My uh, embroidery needles or darning needles, these are nice chunky thick ones used for weaving in ends and kitchener stitching the armholes at the end, also by Clover, and come in a nice little case. Then we have some snips, also handy for weaving in ends and when you're winding up yarn. These are from Labour and Waste, which is a store here in London. Then we also have the stitch holders. Uh, this is the first time I'll be using these in a project. Uh, before I would use waste yarn just to hold the stitches for under the sleeves, but this time I was trying out these lovely stitch holders. A crochet hook, uh, super handy and important for when you drop stitches, even after all my years of knitting, it still happens. As I mentioned, I'm knitting this jumper with some Quince & Co yarn called Lark, which is a worsted weight yarn. It's in this nice grey colour that's heathered, so even though it's a super simple pattern that I'm doing, it kind of creates some texture and interest on the garment. I'll be using eight skeins of this yarn, um, which is a decent amount. It's standard, I'd say, for a, a man's jumper. Uh, and as you can see here in this clip, I'm just about to start winding uh, one of the skeins into a ball so I can knit from it. I don't have a swift and ball winder to do this faster and easier into nice neat cakes. So what I do is just drape the skein over the back of a chair and then wind it up by hand. Every knitter has the horror story of when they started knitting and tried to knit directly from the unwrapped skein of yarn. And I have my own, which was when I was first making a shawl for the first time, a triangular shawl, and I thought I could just unwrap the skein and then just start knitting away and within a couple of rows I had this awful tangled mess that I spent hours detangling. So now I have learned my lesson and yeah, back of the chair, wind it up by hand. It's quite a long and tedious process but I try to do a couple of balls at a time. So let me just speed this up for you and while I speed through this, let me tell you about the pattern I'm using. It's actually something I found 10 years ago when I first started knitting, which is a sweater making class on YouTube from Knitpix, which is a brand of uh, yarn. And it's like a workshop that takes you through knitting a seamless bottom up raglan style sweater or jumper. And that's what I'll be following. I'll drop a link in the box for you to see. It's a great pattern because it's kind of a schematic in how to make a standard jumper so once you kind of finish and accomplish this jumper you will be able to knit more complicated patterns right after that. So this jumper is made in four parts. You knit the two sleeves, the body and then you join them all together and knit the shoulders and the neck neckline. Here you can see me working on one of the sleeves. This is also where I do most of my knitting, spend most of my knitting time. Just relaxing on the couch, watching something on TV. I can watch something fairly detailed, nothing with subtitles, but since this jumper is all stockinette, all knit stitch, I can just blast through it, knitting away. 
it's quite relaxing, quite meditative, so I really enjoy working on it like this. out off the couch and into the world. There's not a lot of places you can go right now, especially in winter, you can't really knit on a park bench, but I did have the opportunity to go to my local coffee shop and knit and sit in the corner with my boyfriend and just relax and enjoy the process. And yes, I did say that my boyfriend was here with me in this coffee shop, so he does know that I am knitting a jumper for him for Christmas. One of the infamous things about knitting a jumper for a partner is that there's a curse that if you make them a jumper you're destined to break up before or near the time that it's done and this is usually because the boyfriend doesn't like it or doesn't wear it as often so in order to combat that my boyfriend picked the pattern he picked the style he picked the color of yarn so he knew it was coming Plus, we live in a studio flat here in London, so there was no way for me to hide it from him unless I wanted to um, sit in the bathroom and knit on the toilet the whole time, so we didn't want to do that. But here I am back on the couch, and you can see at this point I'll have completed the two sleeves and I'll have started on the body. Um, here as well I will show you sped up how long it takes me to do one round of the body. It uh, takes about seven minutes and once you finish the sleeve and the body and you join for the shoulders you have even longer rows that are probably around 300 stitches. So it is a long process but it is super rewarding to slowly make your way up creating a garment that you can actually wear because Yes, you can wear hats and scarves and things like that, but there's something about creating a piece of clothing like a jumper or a sweater that feels really, really satisfying. Almost as satisfying as when I click my red row counter that I love very, very much. And hey presto, I'm not going to make you watch any more of me sitting and knitting, um, but I'm going to show you the finished piece. This is the finished jumper from my boyfriend. This is it before it's blocked. Blocking is basically when you wash your knitwear and you can kind of stretch it and manipulate it a little bit to fix any small sizing issues. It also helps all the fibers relax and just makes the whole thing softer and more pliable. So here it is in all its grey v-neck glory. And here it is right after it's come out of the water from being blocked. I also found it funny that the water is blue so I guess this is a, a blue-grey base but yeah a few days for it to dry and then it's done. the finished product. I'm so happy with it, really pleased with it, and my boyfriend is too. So thank you so much for watching, and if you want to see some other knitted content, let me know. If any questions, hit me up too. Bye!